It's Wednesday, October the 4th, and you're tuned in to the TNIB Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the whole wide world, as promised from seven days ago. Mm -hmm. This week, we got our hands on the Super Nintending Classico. That's right. I, nope. didn't, I didn't mess that up. Nope. Nope. Super nope. Nintendo Classic Edition is yeah, what it is. There you go. That's what you said the first time. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they came out. We bought them. We played them. We got our thoughts. We do? Mm. Are we going to do it now? Yeah. Okay. That's what we're reviewing this week. We're reviewing the Super Nintendo Classic. So, for those who don't for those who don't know, let's go down the list. Let's go down the list of games. Do we really need to do that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Contra 3, Donkey Kong Country, Earthbound, Final Fantasy 3, Slash 6. Mm-hmm. F-Zero, Kirby's Dream Course, Kirby Superstar, mm-hmm. Mega Man X, Secret of Mana, Star Fox, Street Fighter 2, but the Turbo Hyper Fighting Edition, mm-hmm. Super Castlevania 4, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Mario Kart, mm-hmm. Super Mario RPG, mm-hmm. Super Mario World, mm-hmm. Super Metroid, mm-hmm. Super Punch-Out, mm-hmm. Link to the Past, yep. Yoshi's Island, okay. and the all-new, but also old, Star Fox 2. Okay. So it's got a good list of games. Yeah, sure it does. So where do you want to start? You want to start with the games? You want to start with the hardware? You want to start with the box? Um, the box is the box. Whatever. <laughs> the box is my first Photoshop attempt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a bunch of screens. Let's talk about the hardware. What do you think of the hardware? I think this thing is super cute. Like okay. holding that in your hand and like it actually fits in your hand. I yeah. didn't like for some reason because I never had a a Nintendo Classic or an NES Classic mm-hmm. and. I've never actually seen one out of the box, mm-hmm. to be honest. Mm-hmm. I just didn't think it would be that small. And yep. when you get it, it is. Yep. And it's like, I don't know, it's just adorable. Uh, super light. Like, the plastic on it feels pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> I was surprised that it uses Wii controller ports. Yeah, I was pretty bummed. Yeah, I was like, oh, sweet. Proprietary cable ports are back. Yeah. Huzzah! And I was like, oh, that's garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... I don't know. Like the controllers are full size. Yeah, it's Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, no. you get two. Mm-hmm. You get two instead of one this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I think overall it's kind of solid. Like we were talking about it earlier, but the cords are still too short. Yeah. Uh, they should probably have a wireless option. Yeah. I don't I know. can't believe they didn't learn that from the first yeah. time with the NES Classic. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's a tiny little box. It looks like the Super Nintendo I remember. It's just smaller. Um. I like how the power and the reset button still function. Yeah. I wish the eject button functioned. Yeah. <laughs> I turned it around expecting to find outputs for composite cables. Yeah. And it wasn't there. It's just HDMI. Yeah. And then what is it? USB micro? Yeah, so I thought that was cool. I used my phone's charger too. Oh, to, to power it? Yeah. Yeah. I, did, yeah, I didn't even use the cables in the box. It's like, oh, okay, I have a couple like earphone or headphone and and uh other miscellaneous electronics I could use to power it mm-hmm. through that. Uh, yeah, my big problem is just the cord. I just wish it were longer. Uh, I think the thing that most stood out to me was I do, I wish that the UI was just a bit more, when you turn it on, I mean, I wish that it, you, it's just a bit more intricate. It's just so simple. Yeah, it's a list of games. No, but I mean, like, I wish I could access it from within any game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry, I don't mean like it's not... Like if you press like a certain button combination, yeah. you just pop back out. Yeah, I, or there was another button on the controller. Like nah, a, you like can't. Like a home button. The sanctity? No way. Yeah, but this is not trying to replace a Super Nintendo. It's just trying to relive it. I but mean, there's there's no composite cables on it. It's trying to emulate it. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wish that was better. Because, I mean, like the cool... It's nice to have save states. It sucks that you have to hit the reset button to get to, to access yeah, Every it. single time? Yeah. Especially if you're trying to play from far away. Yeah, it's just like, ugh. Uh, especially late at night when you're like, I'm just going to play this and turn it off. And it's been so long since I've had to get up and actually power with the console or whatnot. And it's just a bummer. It hasn't been that long for me. <sighs> but bums me out. Yeah, bums like, me out. I play retro games, so. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Like, yeah, I would kind of wish it had a wireless controller or like at least an option for yeah. it. Um. Yeah, other than that, like the hardware is pretty, pretty staple. I think mm-hmm. I wish the so to to take out the the port in the front for the two controllers, mm-hmm. uh, you kind of have to like dig that your sucks. fingernails yeah. into the bottom yeah. and like it's like this really secure 
yeah. thing in the front, but it's just a pain when you need to use the controllers. Yeah. So I wish the eject button just opened like it. ejected that front panel. Yeah. That would have been nice, but what you gonna do? Yeah. As for the games, uh, they're every bit that I remember them being. Games are hot. Sure are. I like. Did you try all the filters? I haven't tried all. I've only tried um, Pixel Perfect. I didn't try the CRT scan lines. Oh, you tried oh, Pixel Perfect. I was like, that's a waste. There's no point. No, it's weird. Uh, Four by three. I, I played CRT right out of the box. Did you really? Yeah. Did I switched like... it to, to uh, the scan lines, and I'm like, whoa! I cannot believe it looks like. The only the only difference is uh, I wanted to go up to the TV and feel the static. But you couldn't. But you couldn't. So that's, that's the thing with me with these things. Like, I don't want CRT scan lines. Oh, I just wanted to see it. Yeah. Like I play it as the regular. No scan lines, whatever. But I had to know. Yeah. If I'm not playing it on a CRT, I yeah. want it to be crisp. Exactly. Like, yeah, I uh, agree. And that's the other thing. Like this is this also uh, kind of it kind of made me think of what I like what my old games would look like if I had like a like an upscaler. Yeah. Uh, I forget what that upscaler is from Japan that everyone's lost their garbage about. <sighs> I can't remember. But yeah, like if, if I had an upscaler for that kind of stuff and man, like the game looks super clean. Like mm-hmm. all the games look super clean and it upscales really nicely. I like the, I like the borders you can choose. Oh yeah. Do all the different stuff. So like some of them are dynamic and they change colors while you're playing. Yeah. Other of them are static and stuff. Uh, I think my favorite little touch on this is the screensaver mode. The one where it's like burn in reduction. So is that you, when you leave the menu on? So when you leave the oh, menu yeah. on for a long enough time, mm-hmm. Mario will come out and he'll go to a game that has a save state and he'll play that game and it'll replay your last save state. Oh, really? And so it'll play it up to a certain point and then if you leave it on long enough, more intricate things will happen. Like Mario, Luigi will come out and he'll go into the options and change it to like CRT oh. or change your borders oh. and then it'll go back in. But then when you start the game up again, it resets back to the settings you chose. Oh, okay. Because I just I put into settings and I just put it on demo mode. Oh, okay. That's where mine Mario just chooses a random game and then he just plays through it. Hmm. So that's it. Yeah. What what games have you tried with this thing so far? Uh, Mario World. Okay. Mario World Two. Yoshi's Island. Island. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart. Okay. And F Zero. So I've only out of those ones, I've only tried Mario World mm-hmm. one so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game's pretty good. It's still the best Mario game. It's like the second best Mario game. Mm. It's all right. Mm. Uh, that we were talking about it also. Like that game is a lot harder than I remember it being. All these games are a lot harder than yeah. I remember. And I was just like, okay, I'm gonna stop. Oh really? Yeah. Did that really push you off? I was like, uh, I've beat these games when I was a kid, and I'm like, I got nothing to prove. For me, it was like. Whatever, man. I'm not old. I could do it again. Like yeah. I started like arguing with myself. Yeah, it was, for me, it was more of a curiosity thing. Like, is it as I remember? Is it different? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, they're just like what I remember. And I was like, because again, I only bought this for Final Fantasy three slash six. So the other games is is more just like, oh, I might as well check them out before I yeah. dive deep into the thing I want to play. Yeah. So okay, I've been playing. Uh, I started up a Link to the Past, yeah. and I can confirm mm-hmm. I've never played a Link to the Past. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I started that up. That game's, that game's pretty good. That game. Some would say that's the best Zelda game. Uh, the game's pretty good. Some would say that's the best Zelda game. <laughs> I haven't game. beat it yet, so I can't make that decision. That that was the game. I remember playing that and being like, why is Orcarina of the Time just the same game? Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I played Star Fox, original Star Fox. That does not hold up. It does not hold up. And there's a lot of stuff in there that I now realize in Star Fox 64. It's like an homage to the first one. Like certain stuff in Corneria and, yeah. and the asteroid belts and all that. And I was like, damn, this is just Star Fox 64, but old. Uh, and I unlocked Star Fox 2, but I haven't played it yet. Okay. Because uh, you have to beat the first level of Star Fox 1 in oh, order to unlock yeah. Star Fox That's 2. a challenge in itself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I played some Mega Man X. Oh, I should play that. That That's game's a great good. Game. That game's really good, and it, it makes me remember. Uh, th- Who did you wait? Which level did you go to first? Uh, I beat. I didn't go to any level. Oh, I you beat just the beat tutorial the level, oh, okay. and I was like, "This is cool." Okay. And then I, I want to play some other stuff, but it, it reminds me of uh, this video I really like by the, one of the Game Grumps guys. Mm-hmm. It's called Sequelitis, and it talks about like how Mega Man X is like a genius in game design because it teaches you how to play without actually like here's a tutorial yeah right and i was noticing all that stuff in the first level and i'm like man this game is fucking smart Mm -hmm. about that stuff 
Uh, what else did I try out? Uh, Kirby, Kirby Superstar Saga. Yeah. I have that game on the DS and replaying it originally is fun. I like playing the multiplayer games like the Kirby Samurai and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest, the game I've been playing the most is uh, Kirby's Dream Course. Really? The golf game. Really? So I brought it to work. That's the one that I feel like shouldn't have been on this. this, this... Okay. To be fair, that game is, it's a Kirby game, yes. but it's not a Kirby game. Like It's got Kirby on the in name and, and image alone so i'm like why would you put that on here man it's a golf game yeah it's an awesome multiplayer game yeah. i don't know me and tj were playing it during work and i had a bunch of fun okay that game's awesome okay uh and then i played some final fantasy 6 yeah. i got to like the first save point i was like man this looks nice i will beat this eventually <laughs> what else did i do yeah you didn't try super metroid i did try super metroid okay I can confirm, I have never played Super Metroid. Oh my god. <laughs> all, the, all of these, like, these are technically the greatest games in the series that you've never played. And uh, Yeah, I've never played them, right? Uh, so yeah, there's there's a... Man, this list is so great. There's just a bunch of good stuff on here. Yeah. And, I might try uh, Castlevania. Yeah, I haven't played that one either. <laughs> I, oh, I also played uh, Contra 3. And? I like pressing up. And having two guns and like just being oh, like yeah. spread eagle, like yeah. looking like a boss. Yeah. That's contra. That game's hard. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. So far, Super Mario World. It's like. So what do you think? Do you think it was worth your one hundred Canadian dollars? One hundred percent. Yeah. Because they're the Super Nintendo for me is a console I never owned. Yeah. I went from NES to N sixty four. And I'm a stickler for uh, buying things on the original hardware yeah. and playing them. Yeah. So for a hundred bucks. Canadian, like, this thing is completely worth it. Because if I want to play Final Fantasy VI on a Super Nintendo, first I need a Super Nintendo, so that's like 60 bucks. Yeah. Final Fantasy VI by itself, like, cart only is like $100. Yeah, it's not cheap anymore. It's not. Um, so that's like, it's awesome. It's mm. That game alone makes up for the price if mm-hmm. you want to play this stuff on original hardware. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a lot of bangers on this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... Mm-hmm. You, you, some would say it's the greatest console of all time. Some would. Mm. Uh, I'm going to say that the, the PS2 is pretty hot. <laughs> PS2 is a pretty hot console. I, I think I would say the PS2 as well. Although the DS gives it a run DS for DS is money. also pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, Xbox 360. I heard that's got a lot of good stuff on it. Yeah, looking back, 360 was amazing. Right? Mm. So this is like... I can see why this console is in, like, the upper echelon Mm -hmm. of, like, dude, this system was nuts. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't know. I feel like for as much as the NES did, I'm starting to realize that kind of the Super Nintendo cemented video games as, like, this thing that's not going away. Yeah. Right? As a thing that can be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, for me, I don't know. For me, it's totally worth it never played these games yeah you're happy with your purchase i am very happy with my purchase what about you i probably could have done without it Ooh. like i after the initial like uh uh, like uh rush of oh man never owned nes or snes uh now i uh i technically have one with all the games i technically ever wanted yeah and it's like it's here and it's like I really only bought Final Fantasy, and I don't know. Like, I guess, and that's from a value proposition. Yeah, it's totally worth it. But is it something that I needed? No, it wasn't. For you, you could have bought like the Game Boy Advance version. Yeah, that would have been fifty bucks. I, I could have played the emulator yeah. on my Mac. No, I, I no. could have played the PS One version. You could have played the PS One version you can't, on either on any of my PlayStation. You can't play. It. You could have played that shitty phone version. I could have. No, yeah, I could have. And also, don't emulate it. Yeah, but I mean, like, I think as a thing that I think it's just gonna sit there and collect dust. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, like, eventually, this is something like I'm gonna be done with. I think, see, I'm already done with it. Really? I feel like, un- unless, until I make that commitment of, okay, I'm going to run through Final Fantasy VI right now. It's going in the box? Yeah. I might as well just go back to the box. Okay. Like, I okay, the games in here I want to beat. Super Mario World. Yeah. Super Mario RPG. Earthbound. Zelda. Super Metroid. Final Fantasy VI. Uh-huh. That's about it. Right. Uh, I do want to check out Earthbound. Earthbound's cool. Do you know like the scroll down mechanic in Earthbound? No, I don't know anything about Earthbound. Oh. So like, say you have say you have a hundred health. Yeah. But an enemy hits you for hundred and one health. 
Oh shit. While your health is going down, you can, you can heal them. Oh, okay. It's pretty cool. I feel like that was in something else, but I can't remember. Mm-hmm. A Secret mm-hmm. of Mana is also on here. I haven't mm-hmm. touched it, but for me, I want to play Secret of Mana 3 player. And this thing only has two controller ports. Yeah. So that's kind of disappointing. But yeah, I don't know. Secret of Mana is something I want to play through with somebody. Because that seems like the way to play. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Secret of Mana, you definitely want to play that multiplayer. That's not a... I mean, you can do it single player, but it's always more fun when you play that. Yeah. Someone else. So yeah, I don't know. Like, It's cool. It's awesome. I can 100% see this is something I'm eventually going to put away. Yeah. Um, Fuck, am I... I should just leave it down here. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of... I don't know. It, it kind of makes me want to buy a Super Nintendo now. Yeah. Like, it, it makes me want to buy these games legitimately. Yeah. Just put them on the console. Buy a... Oh, Frame Meister. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy a Frame Meister. Or not a Frame Meister. That's not what it's called. No, what's the thing called? God damn it. I forget what it's called. The yeah. upscaler. Like, buy an upscaler. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Buy an upscaler and see what that stuff looks like. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm really happy with my purchase. Yeah. I guess technically, you know what? Mine... Technically, mine was for free, so... Sure. Because I'm scum. Awful, yeah. You're scum. So, I guess I can't really be that regretful. So, yeah, I guess I'm okay with it. Yeah. For free, it's not bad. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's really cool. I like, again, I like the portability. I like that I can just pop this in my backpack. I guess I never thought about that. But then I would never bring... I don't... I'm, I think I'm over the point of bringing games with me anywhere now. Really? Yeah, like handhelds are fine, but I stick. stick I only play them in my room. I don't go anywhere with them. My DS is always on me. Yeah. Like the Switch is still too new to where I'm nervous to bring that out. Oh. To where I'm just like, I'm gonna be playing this on a park bench, and someone's gonna fucking sock me in the back of the head and steal my Switch. I feel like. Oh, see, I've never been into that. Like the idea of playing video games outside in the sun. How you playing Boktai, boy? <laughs> in my backyard. Oh my god. On the edge of my window. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. This stuff is like also working now. Like the the thought of oh, I can just hook this thing up to my yeah. to my P, like my monitor at work. Yeah. And then just like power it through USB. What your coworkers say? Coworkers are like, "Man, that's a break." Like the one she said, she's like, "Man, now that's a break." <laughs> we we're just sitting there playing Kirby's Dream Course. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. It's not like no, I'm just I'm, wondering. Yeah, they they were kind of intrigued by it because it is something that's like retro. Yeah, and they they remember it, but like no no one in my office is like a quote unquote gamer. Yeah, right. Okay. Neato. It's cool. cool. I like it. I'm super happy. Yeah. Awesome. It's pretty cool. Give it a rating. It's like a five. It's like a five. It's like a five. It's like a five out of five. It's not a five, but it's a five. It's a five out of five. Yeah, it's a five. For me, it's a fucking five. This like, thing, it's a five. This thing's rad. Yeah, I can't disagree. I'm going to bring that word back. <laughs> rad. Oh, okay. I've been calling things rad lately. Yeah, I hope so. Good for you. It's a good word. Welcome to the 90s. <laughs> now, I'm playing with power. Oh, shit. <laughs> No, you can't bring that back. <laughs> yes, I can. Mm. I think someone will sue you for that. I think one. someone would sue me for that. Hundred <laughs> percent. You should start a YouTube channel, and that should be your, your slogan. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to end all your videos. Like comment, like subscribe, subscribe. now. You are playing with power. <laughs> yeah, that's how you should. Oof. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next thing. Picks of the week because mm. we have stuff that happened. Uh, I only have the one thing. Okay. Go. It's the trailer. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption 2 mm. got announced not too long ago. Uh, they have their first trailer, and it looks like it's a prequel. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the first game took place at the end of like the cowboy <laughs> yeah. days, yeah. right? So uh, this looks like it's taking place in the golden age. In the midst. Yeah. So, which immediately I find way more exciting. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it looks like Red Dead. It does. Like, I, I don't know what they could have shown in this trailer that would have made me go, like, oh, my God. Like, I have no doubt it's going to be a great game. Red Dead was a great game, but I just feel like what could have they done shown me that would have been like, whoo. So I don't remember the first trailers. You mentioned something about them yeah. when I said this, but mm-hmm. it was uh, I, it looks like you're kind of playing a straight villain yeah. in this one, yeah. which I'm kind of down. Yeah. 
if I can just play as a complete monster. Yeah. Uh, but you you said that apparently in the first trailers, it also made it look like that. Like John Marston was like this. Total well, that's dick, what it, right? that's what it makes it look like in every Rockstar game. Uh-huh. Nico Bellic looked like a fucking gangster. Yeah. And it's like, but when you play the games, you find out it's like they're actually just like big softies. Yeah. They just know how to fucking murder everyone. I would really like to play a Rockstar game where you kind of play like a sociopath. Like, well, uh-huh. I guess you got that with Trevor in. In yeah, GTA that's 5. true. That's, that's what he existed for. Yeah. yeah. But just like this guy knows he's bad and what he's doing is bad. Yeah. But he just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Right? Like that'd be cool to just play like this total douche cowboy dude who's robbing, putting time people to train tracks. and. I, f- I feel like if they did, like, I don't, well, I, I would get tired of it real fast. Because like, hmm. what would my motivation be to do anything? Get that paper. But you're a psychopath. What do you care? Okay, maybe not complete crazy. Yeah. Right? Maybe maybe you're trying to work your way up the gang ladder. Okay. But you know you're in a gang, and okay. you know you're doing stuff. All right, all right. Sure. But yeah, so... Uh, it it does look better. It looks a lot better. It looks like they mo-capped more horses. <laughs> yeah, sure does. Otherwise, there's bows and arrows? I bows and arrows. Yeah. There's more hunting. Uh, it seems like there's a lot more kind of like forestry, wildland type of areas. Yeah. Uh, the thing I hope from this game is that their DLC gets kind of buck wild as the first one did. Oh, with the zombies and stuff? The zombie story was really awesome. Uh, but that thing also had Undead Nightmares. Yes. But that thing also had a bunch of side stuff with it. Like when you you could find the four horsemen of the apocalypse horses and oh, tame them. Yeah. Uh, and then slight spoilers. when After you tamed all the horses you could find a unicorn whoa and then what you could tame the unicorn and you could ride around at least like a rainbow trail damn there was that uh there was that mission side mission with bigfoot yep in the forest that was really good uh they had a, they knew how to have fun with that series where in grand theft auto especially if you think of like lost in the damned or ballad of gay tony mm-hmm. it's more it's more grounded more serious type of stories yeah yeah no i agree it uh i i have high hopes for this game i but then i doubt it'll ever fail it's too cool yeah it's, it's too big to fail it's a rock star game yeah like, and even if it does like so say it quote unquote failed mm-hmm. uh this gta 5 online yeah still making them bank yeah uh the other trailer it's not a trailer i showed you there was some gameplay footage from was it blaze blue cross cross tag battle cross tag battle by arc systems yeah i feel like arc systems is Pumping out fighting games like a motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they're bringing out DBZ Fighters. They just brought out Exerd 2. Exerd Revelator 2. Uh, and now they're bringing out this one. And it's a versus game. It was announced at Evo. It's got Blaze Blue crossed with uh, Undernight in Birth. Right. And uh, Ruby. Ruby? Yeah, yeah that, that one. <coughs> that one, the. Uh, Internet series by Rooster Teeth. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. This game doesn't look so hot. No. No, we saw it. it looks like some real early gameplay. Uh, if you guys want to search it up, just look up Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle Ruby gameplay. Um, it looks really early. It looks alpha. It looks beta. It looks something not final. For uh, sure. The UI is really rough. The the animation's super choppy. Yeah. Which is a surprise because even with the Blaze Blue characters, like, they have those models. They have those animation, like, strings, right? Mm-hmm. And original Blaze Blue is, is pretty. That's yeah. a pretty game. So to see this one kind of be chunky and just to be overall not that exciting. Yeah. Uh, is kind of disappointing. But also, it probably doesn't help that Dragon Ball Z Fighter looks hot. So yeah. <laughs> that game looks amazing. That game's the current benchmark, right? Uh, what they show recently? They showed um, Super Saiyan God yeah. modes for SSGSS. <laughs> it's acronyms, dumb. Yeah. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku. Yeah. Which is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So they got the blue hair in it. Seems like you get upgraded attacks. I don't know if that's a a separate character. That you pick, or if it's just like power up mode, kind of like how Frieza can turn into Gold Frieza for a bit. Yeah, I don't know, like Mega Evolution. <laughs> yes, like 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 a Mega Evolution. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Vince. Uh, 
Uh, but that game still looks hot. Yeah. And it's kind of shitting on all the other Arc System games right now. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, the only other story I wanted to talk about, it's coming out of Polygon. Uh, the Wii Polygon. Sh- the Wii Shop channel, everyone's yep. favorite uh, console that they bought, played Wii Bowling, and mm-hmm. then put away, mm-hmm. is shutting down. It's just shutting down. Like, they're mm-hmm. shutting down the Wii Shop channel as a whole. But with it is going the Wii Virtual Console. And on the Wii Virtual Console, there are, like, this story says 226 titles. That's it? Which is, you say that's it, but that's a lot for any sort of retro service that's run by a main de- main publisher, like a main developer type of thing. I guess. Uh, the Wii Shop right now is kind of, it's kind of like a, a holy bastion, like a, like a religious cult, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, people who want to play retro games on a newer console and buy them for a decent price use that. Wii Shop. Okay. And the thing is with the Wii Shop version is because you're buying it on the Wii and it's Wii is only standard def, those games look hot. Those games look really nice on a TV. Uh, Wii's don't... Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's got component cables. Yeah. But that's 480p. Yeah. Right? And so playing that stuff in 40p, like, stuff is how it used to look. Like, you don't have to play it on a CRT, but if you, you can if you want to. And it, it's the closest thing... To owning the original console currently, like, in a legal capacity. Yeah. Uh, and then that's the problem with the Wii U version. The Wii U console, because it's HD, it blows everything up, it stretches out pixels, and everything kind of looks like ass. Yeah. Uh, so the Wii Shop isn't going away till 2019. Okay. So it's a long ways away. Uh, but the thing is, with it, so if you have a Wii, and you have all those game installed, you have it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's cool. Mm-hmm. If for some reason you were ever to delete that game, if you were to ever like say your Wii died and the hard or the hard drive crashed or something, and you lost those games, there is no way to re-download your purchases, okay. the things you paid money for. Okay, and this sparked a whole conversation of of the all digital future yeah. of video games, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. It, it's my thing of I want to buy physical mm-hmm. because if one day someone is just like. Nah, servers are these servers are done. We're just gonna shut it off. Okay. Uh, all my purchases are gone. Yeah. Right. And when I buy something, like, or at least in my mind, I sort of expect some sort of permanence. Mm-hmm. Right. Unless it's a subscription mm-hmm. to like a streaming service or something. Right. When I buy a song, I want to keep that song forever. Yeah. Or, or quote unquote forever. Yeah. Right. And I don't know. This is kind of the first step towards this weird, nebulous like. Uh, like intangible video game future mm-hmm. right and i don't like it <laughs> i don't like it i mean whatever <laughs> you're all you're embracing i i i have no opinion either way really like what i for like i bought a couple games on the wii virtual console mm-hmm. i enjoyed them when i played them and then i'm done with them and you just and that's it forget about it but if you wanted to go back... So, like, with the Super Nintendo Classic, you now have a thing yeah. that has those games. And if you ever yeah. wanted to go back to Super Mario World, you have a way to do that. Sure. But if you didn't have that option, there's a lot of games on the the Wii Virtual Console that you kind of can't get anywhere else mm-hmm. other than using emulation. Other than using gray slash illegal areas. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, the same thing. Like, my, my Wii still has those games on them. Mm-hmm. I, I could still plug it back into the wall and turn them on and play them. Mm-hmm. It's more of the thing. It's more of the thing of I can't re-download them at any point, right? It's what Steam promises with their library is, is like if Steam ever goes down, they have backups to mm-hmm. where, uh, even though Steam will no longer be a service, you could still re-download your purchases at any point, mm-hmm. right? You can still use it as a library. You don't okay. have to have terabytes upon terabytes of memory. All right. Uh, effectively, at least in my mind, is what Nintendo is doing is they've taken your money, they've given you a product. But now they're just like, eh, we don't feel like it supporting it anymore. Yep. And they've taken your money and gone. Which... I mean, I don't know if I if I, I would agree to that extent. Because, I mean, like, you, they, they've given you a really huge leeway, lead mm-hmm. time. You, I mean, yeah, having to have that much uh, hard drive memory kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. But you have that option. Like, it's there. It's not the best option, but it's not like they just... I when I read the story, I thought it was they turned it off 
now. Immediately? Yeah. Okay. And then it was just done. And I'm like, that's shitty. But if you have like over a year to, to figure this out, and in that year, I'm, I'm sure they're going to have announcements on how they're going to go forward <laughs> with this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You may not be able to get it on the Wii and have that, that one-to-one SD amazing retro experience. But I mean, that was always the risk, right? Mm-hmm. Like consoles come and go. And at some point, the service was going to die. Mm-hmm. Like, I think everyone has had accepted that. The only reason it works on Steam is because PCs aren't this one generational thing, right? They're yeah. constantly come, going with the times. But, I mean, like, I think about all the digital games I bought on the DS. And, like, they're, whatever. They're mm-hmm. gone now. Like, Are they? Well, they're, I don't know. Is the DS store still? I thought the DS store was still around. Maybe, but like I don't even. I, I to me, it might as well be dead. I don't even touch that thing. And mm-hmm. I think I think Nintendo's just catering to the masses here. Like most people don't fucking care anymore. Yeah. Like when the Wii was hot in two thousand six, and they're like, "Oh, now I could play sixty four games again. I'm gonna do that." But it's been over a decade now, mm-hmm. and like a lot of those people have moved on. And I get that there is a small demographic there that you're part of. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I get that this is fe- this offends you, but. I mean, it's a business, right? At the end of the day, they can't appeal to everyone, and that's what they're doing. I don't know. I always feel that the like it's a business scapegoat is usually a shitty scapegoat. It for let's... for for how true it is. Like again, like we're both business majors. Yeah. And, like for for I understand how true that statement can be. Yeah. It doesn't make it any less garbage. I mean, at the same time, this is also Nintendo. Going in, I think everyone had this like in the back of their mind acceptance that like eventually that like. Yeah, even I did yeah. at some point. But like, now that it's actually coming to fruition, you're like, holy shit, like, this is actually this weird thing. And now you know going forward, like... Yeah. I mean, even the Switch doesn't have a proper online component, yeah. so it's not like... That was the other thing yeah. people were saying, is that this is a move now that they're getting ready for the Switch Virtual Console. Yeah. And to to kind of make people yeah. buy stuff. Jump ship, yeah. Jump ship, they're going to shut this down. Yeah. Which, again makes sense yeah. from a business proposition right like why would people rebuy those games if they can hook up their wii yeah right yeah like i i think i'm just more upset that nintendo hasn't built the infrastructure so that you could just carry over oh yeah right that also sucks yeah but so yeah it, it's it's uh it's it sparked a lot of discussion in terms of like uh people who are interested in like the preservation of games mm-hmm. like rom dumping and stuff like mm-hmm. that but it's also made uh, a really large argument for for emulators Mm -hmm. for emulation like if people people will find a way to play stuff they want like look at movies look at music if uh if you kind of don't offer that thing they're gonna turn to illegal means yeah and it's kind of disappointing to see at least in my my eyes it's disappointing to see nintendo just be like and we're shutting it down whatever Mm -hmm. yeah i mean sucks but that's that's the world sometimes like i don't don't know to me to me like if like say you were into movies and then i don't know universal was like had a streaming service i'm like yeah fuck it you can't get these movies anymore also who cares yeah right people who are who would be huge movie buffs or movie historians would be totally kind of bummed about that yeah so no i get it kind of the same thing yeah it's just the the whole idea of having an an always accessible library of the past we'll say oh uh, yeah it definitely sucks but i don't know i I've, I've always maintained that like it's it's not gone forever there's mm. always going to be something there and and to be yeah the 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 turnaround of this is there's emulation there yeah. like all those games that are on that have been dumped yeah like if you want to play it you you can play it like what yeah. was the one thing that was on um internet archive like someone dumped it was like a like an official library or something they dumped a whole bunch of dos games mm-hmm. that you can just play for free in your browser yeah like there will always be those organizations yeah yeah like um, don't get me wrong i would love to be able to support the official means yeah but it's 2017 we live in a world where like almost anything that was ever digital is instantly accessible mm-hmm. so yeah there you go there you go so that's the story yeah and yeah those are my picks yeah i uh have you this is slightly okay this this is formula one related but um (coughs) have you heard of the latest big big politics scandal in formula one is it that guy who was holding a mclaren umbrella (laughs) no no okay Okay. so uh 
everyone knows Formula One's very, very expensive. Yes. And all teams are very secretive. Yes. And they never like it when other people look at their stuff. Yes. However, there is, is one person is it Ferrari? or one group okay. that has access to all the teams and can see in intricate detail how everything works in each team. The stewards? Yes, the FIA, the okay. directors. Yeah. So they, because every time a team has to introduce something, they have to make sure it's legal. Yeah. So somebody has to go in and check that. The guy who was doing it, he uh, he was he was doing it. He and he saw all the all the latest teams now because they they all have deadlines for like when they have to put in for the next year's car. Mm-hmm. And he so he's seen all the, let's just say all the hot new toys and tricks they're gonna do for next year. Yeah. He saw them, immediately put in his resignation. And rumor has it he's signing with one of the actual teams what? in a month. What? Yeah. And everyone is fucking upset. <laughs> Holy shit. Because he's like, they're like, yeah, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull, like, they just saw everything. And now you're going to tell me he's going to go join Renault? This, like, yeah, like they're a midfielder, kind of like not winning. That's a huge advantage. And then when I asked Renault for comment, they're like, we have to be aggressive if we want to be world champions. What the fuck? That's some fucked up shit. That, there's nothing in like a steward's contract that says that they can't do something so like this. So usually, feel... usually in Formula One, if you're going to like move around the the paddock or the industry, you have to take a year gardening leave. Yeah. And where you're just not involved in anything. But... Because the FIA is based in Switzerland, Geneva, mm-hmm. there's a law saying you cannot have someone out of work for longer than three months. Oh my god! And so they can't stop him. Oh, that. Are they gonna have to move that out of Switzerland to stop that? I like... don't know. It's a loophole that like he t- on like that only he realized, and it, it and I guess he must have gotten paid so much money. Yeah, because like that. Okay, because to have that kind of information, that sounds like it was his idea. It wasn't a team's idea. That seems like it was like, hey, I have this thing. Yeah. Hey, Renault, like, what's up? Yeah. Like, you you're gonna pay me all this money because yeah. I have details upon details yeah. written down in notebooks like, upon yeah. notebooks, and like everyone's like, yeah, like, cause and everyone in, the, in all the big bosses are like, yeah, we're all friends with this guy because he's super nice and like. You know, we get we all have good we all have good professional relationships with him. He understands all the intricacies of how our car car works and everything. And it's like, and suddenly just turns around and it's like, hmm. The thing is, is to me, like even even though that's a it's a real politics move, right? Yeah. That's, that's that's rough. Yeah. Uh, that dude burned so many bridges. Yeah. With the announcement alone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The fact that they did have a bunch of uh, professional relationships with this guy. Yeah. And he just said, "Ah, fuck it. Like, <laughs> I'm in for that paycheck, baby. Only live once." Uh. Carpe diem threw his hands in the air and he's like, "I'm out." <laughs> I read this story and I was like, "Oh my god." No, that's some real shady shit. Yeah. So that yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I thought that was more interesting than the previous race. So. Yeah. That's what I gotta say. That's, uh... Huh. Yeah. That's real shady. Uh-huh. So that guy... Like, pff, even, so the thing is, is, like, Renault has no use for this guy. Well, he's gonna join the team as their lead... Um, like, design? Like, a technical... Okay. Leader. But, like... Wh- how, what's the thing? Cause, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> how how can you trust this guy anymore? If he is willing to give you that information, yeah. how do you know he is not willing to just turn on you on a dime and just be like, here's all Renault's secrets, like who gives a fuck? Right? Yeah. Like that guy has now has no credibility. He's lost all credibility. He's burned every bridges with other teams. Mm. If Renault drops him, who's gonna hire him back? Nobody. The FIA? The, no, <laughs> they should not do that. <laughs> I don't know. Just because happen. the Geneva Convention, like that kind of stuff in Switzerland, uh, yeah. says that he you can't forcibly keep him out yeah. of work, doesn't mean you have to give him a job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I have no idea. So I'm trying to think of that's like if a govern like an independent government agency who yeah. is going around doing like forensic accounting on a, yeah. a bunch of big tech companies yeah. was then like. I'm getting hired by Samsung. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You have all this intricate knowledge of other companies. Yeah, and he's other... like, he's like, oh, oh whatever. 
whatever. Like, uh, they offer me a lot of money and a free phone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so, super shitty. So next year seems to be like an interesting season. I can't wait to see what cars turn up. So that's all right. Like, this is the thing. This is what I love about F one. Yeah. F one to me, like races are cool. Like cars are cool. Yeah. Seeing Lewis Hamilton like live with a tiger for months on end. Yeah. That's pretty dope. But like the, the politics yeah, man. of F one is like ju- it's just rich people bickering. Yeah. And sometimes something cool happens. Yeah. Like this one. Yeah. So <laughs> hopefully uh it all turns out for the worst. That's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, let's move into our week. Formula E. That's good. Ooh. No, let's not go there yet. Not yet. I'm not ready. You're not ready? I'm not ready. Fully autonomous. Oh, I'm not ready. That's robo racing. Yeah. I'm not ready for that. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you. Imagine the G's you could pull if there's no driver. No, thanks. No. No. I don't like it. I do not like it. Oh, I got some other pick was, hey, guess what? What? Overwatch's Halloween event is back next week. Oh, the um, new costumes? Fucking pumped. Yeah, Reaper's uh, The Phantom of the Opera. Okay. And McCree's uh, Van Helsing. Those are both really great. Yeah. They don't, they don't have the full reveal that yet. But does McCree have a gun or does he have a crossbow on his arm? No, he has a gun. He has the crossbow on the back. Lame. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah. This week. This week. Do you want to go first? I'm going to go first. The only thing I did other than play my Super Nintendo Classic that's new yeah. is I played Watch Dogs 2. Oh! Yeah. Is it as good as you hoped it would be? It is. Oh, okay. So, Watch Dogs 1, I only played it a little bit at a friend's house, but yeah. overall, it seemed kind of disappointing. Yeah. Uh, the reviews kind of seem spot on. Like, it's got a bunch of cool ideas, and it doesn't really execute. Yeah. The story's really boring, because it's super serious and all this stuff. Um, Watch Dogs 2 has, like, the right amount of style that you would want out of a quote-unquote hacker game. Yeah. Right? It's very self-aware of what it's trying to be. Yeah. But it doesn't feel campy. Like, all these characters who seem like caricatures of, of hackers, like, yeah, almost feel, like, they kind of feel like real people. Even though the hacking you're doing is fucking possible Yes. And impractical. <laughs> like, it's, oh, yo, go to this 3D, pr- <laughs> like, you can 3D print guns. <laughs> right? You can 3D print assault rifles. I can't wait for that future. And the thing is, is, like, the 3D printing takes about four seconds oh man <laughs> oh i can't wait yeah. so so the the story is uh main character you've you've really fell in love with a group called De- dead sec are they a hacker group they're a hacker group okay and they're nice. they're kind of like they're kind of like the the rebels they're the like i don't want to compare them to anything realistic because okay be, make it less cool yeah but pretty much they're they're a rebel group they're uh, a rebel faction yeah, they're a rebel okay. faction all right and they're combating the thing from the first game it's called ct ct os or city os city oh so what happened in the first game is that chicago was like f it we're gonna put every single electronic device um oh, banking yeah. street lights everything onto a single server that such a smart idea it's so smart why couldn't right? i think of that <laughs> right and <laughs> only and, one yeah and pretty much what it is it's like oh like all big data is now the future they know everything about you and you do that in this game so city os has gone mainstream you are now in san francisco city os is a part of it and there's a there's a new fake google out uh-oh and fake google is getting kind of powerful and it's getting kind of scary the things they know about you uh, basically what it is, is like, they're like two steps away from basically being minority report, Ooh. like, like denying you loans before you even think about a loan, Ooh. like arresting you for a crime before you even do a crime, Ooh. like that kind of stuff. All and so they're algorithms. like, this big data is scary. And it's, it's something that shouldn't like, no one should have this one power, right? Yeah. This is too ridiculous. Except me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so what their, what their group is all about is they do their their main plan is they're they're gonna do a bunch of uh social media campaigns. So they they have a they have a social media like analyst and all this stuff and, and uh what she is doing, she's telling you guys with your hacker skills to go out, do things that gain you followers, gain you fans, to download the DeadSec app. And what that DeadSec app does is you can't see any personal information from that person or anything. You don't have to make an account, the app just has to be on the phone. But what you're doing is that you're giving them computing power. 
Oh, so like, the, like like folding at home. Yeah. So like the more the more oh. followers you get, or the more app downloads you get, the more cloud computing you have. Damn. And what your goal is is to have enough computing power to take down CTOS and fake Google. Okay. Okay. And there's this whole like personalized story. Uh, the main character is is a is a black guy, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to for him like being a black guy in a tech dominated world. Where it's just like a bunch of white dudes. Yeah. Right? Um, and also just to be in San Francisco, like cops kind of profiling him and yeah. other stuff like this. Like there are there are things of uh like so I went into a fake Scientology camp. Ooh. And when I snuck in, like someone spotted me and one of the guys was like, Hey, we don't allow you people inside. Ooh. And they're like, he's like, You people, Ooh. listen, motherfucker, I'm black and proud, and like like he'll say that kind of yeah. stuff, right? Like, he's proud of his heritage, proud of his culture, and it's not something like it's something very overt that you don't see normally yeah. in, in yeah. video games, yeah. right? Normally it's kind of homogenized. Like, I hear you. And it, it's pretty cool to see, like, a, a, someone who is not, like, a white male main character be proud of the culture they're from and embrace sure. that sort of stuff. For and sure. also, like, point out the things that bother them. Yeah. It's, really, it's, it's a really interesting take or an interesting spin on usually what would be hmm. Jim Smith. John Doe is ultimate hacker with all the power. Um, this game is really lays into the hacker stuff. So like in the first game, you can go to any pedestrian on the street and you can like see their bank account. Can you, you steal their money? You can steal their oh. money. Uh, you can only steal small amounts from pedestrians, uh, but you can steal larger amounts from companies and stuff like that. Um, you can like, basically this game makes the smartphone to be, the be all end all of any electronic device period because everything you do is with your smartphone yeah you're hacking into building electrical electrical systems you're you're hacking into to smart cars uh there are upgrades where you can hack a car and make it drive itself around it to use it as a distraction uh one of the bigger ones is you can have like a block wide blackout you can just throw an emp out you just you just shut down the electrical grid in the block whoa right and your power-ups are um or, or metered. That's a bad word for it because it's metered by a meter. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have like a, a little grid with a bunch of blocks in yeah. it and then every power uses a set amount of blocks and you got to wait for it to recharge or you can hack other people's phones to steal computing power to then uh -huh. do more stuff. That's cool. Right. And you have a lot of different options. You can get a drone uh, to do like aerial reconnaissance. You can get like a little um, kind of remote controlled RC car that has an arm in it to do like remote hacks. So if you don't want to go inside a building, you can drive the car into the building, kind of stealth around and like remote hack. Uh, it's Rainbow Six? What is that? Yeah, it's pretty cool to remote hack a computer. Okay. There are some contrived stuff like uh, when you have to hack a, yeah. a area or a computer system, yeah. you have to be within, like you start the hack, but then you have to be within this vicinity, this yeah. circle around <clears throat> the thing. Which is weird because your smartphone seems to have unlimited range for everything else. Okay. Right? But when you start doing sp specified hacks that take mm -hmm. longer, you need to be super close. Like, you need to have full bars at all times. Oh. So it's a little weird like and, like, contrived for that to add, like, a certain challenge. Uh, you can go through this whole game non-lethal. And have like, you? I have so far. Okay. Uh, <laughs> your, your, your melee weapon is, like, a rock attached to a bungee cord. So what? Like, yeah, it's, it's like you're David from David and Goliath. What the and you're like hell? swinging this thing around and like bopping people with a rock on the end of the... Like you have like a weight on the end of a bungee Man, cord. jeez. And you're like choking out people with a bungee cord or you're like smacking people in the face and knocking them out. I mean, that's... I get, I'll give them points for uniqueness. Yeah, and you also get like a stun gun. Oh, wow, you have a stun gun, but yeah. you're hitting people with a rock and... and... Yeah. Okay. Like you have a you have a stun gun uh, that shoots like a, a one that shoots... But it's got unlimited bullets. Yeah, so you shoot one, incapacitates, and load another. You have infinite clips on the stun gun. Damn, what, you just 3D printing darts? Yes. Wow. On the fly, apparently. Wow. Like, you got a 3D printer in your pocket or something. Wow, damn. So you're doing that stuff. It's The game has so much style to it. It's really great. I can, it, like, I can see if you were, like, maybe someone older... Like, it's just, like, too youth culture for you. Too millennial? Yeah, too millennial. Okay. Uh, but it really plays into that sort of style. Oh, cool. Like, uh, everyone's trying to go to work, like, 
but like not not want to wear a suit and tie. Yeah. Uh, the man is trying to get them. And in this game, they literally are, but <laughs> uh, can you that's just how it works. Uh, yeah, and they they have a lot of fun at the expense of tech and nerd culture. Okay. Which, if you're into that scene, all these jokes are fucking hilarious. This, this the stuff they go into, uh, like bad action movies or anime, yeah, uh, like that kind of nerd culture, or just more tech stuff. Like, we introduced like new phone. It's the same as the old phone, and all this like, <laughs> right? Like they kind of play into it, like GTA uh, style. Fun. Uh, so they have a lot of fun with it. This this game is really good. It is. It's a nice. Uh, it's a nice break or it's a nice uh, in between from like another gta okay because uh, it is open worlds you're doing weird stuff uh hacking makes car chases very fun because while you're driving you can like turn all the lights to green and then when you pass through the intersection the cops cars get hit by oncoming cars okay. or you can uh a lot of the items in the world like an electrical box or a sewer like a pipe in the road you can set like a proximity sensor. Yeah. So anyone that's not you that walks into that proximity sensor will yeah. set it off. So like the electrical grid will zap that person. Yeah. Or uh, if you hack a pipe in the road, like yeah. it'll blow up the pipe and like fuck up the road. Yeah. And send cars flying and stuff. So yeah. that it's really cool. There's a lot of stuff you can do. There's really dark shit you can do too. Like like you can hack someone's phone and give a gang their GPS location. Whoa. And the gang will come and kill them. Can you just sound a pedestrian? Yes. Why? You can just swat people. Whoa. But with gangs. That's so it, it's really weird when you're trying to be this like it's try, it's it is it's really weird when you're trying to be this Robin Hood type little organization, but you're like swatting people and feeling no remorse. Damn. And you're just sending like death squads of gang members down on one person. That's scary. It's re- it's really scary. Like you look into this future of like all connected tech and it's like damn. hot damn, this is the nightmare scenarios that await for us. I can't wait. But it's pretty cool. I really like that game. <laughs> it's good. Oh, the main character is also way into parkour. Oh yeah, I remember that from the trailers. Yeah, yeah. so you hold uh it's pretty much you have the Assassin's Creed button. Yeah. Where you hold I think it's in this one it's L two or R two. And whenever you go to near a ledge, you're like sliding over the ledge, or you're flipping over it and stuff. So he's like the ultimate awesome dude yeah he, he can hack everything but he's also amazingly athletic yeah and he's yeah. got parkour skills yeah, okay he's got sick driving skills all right so he's immediately just the most unbelievable person in the world the first scene the first okay like slight spoilers the yeah. first level is you hacking the ctos headquarters wow you're in the main area you put a back door into ctos so you can access it anytime that's why you can do all this yeah. stuff and then also, you then go to your San Francisco beach party with your new posse. Hang oh my out, god. Hang out, get drunk on the beach, oh. wake up the next day, you don't know where you are, find piece of female in wow. the bed next to you, and you're like, where am I, bro? Oh, I just got laid, I don't even know where I am, I'm gonna go back to being a parkour flipping hacker. Damn. <laughs> this guy's living the life. He's living the dream. Shit. It's pretty great. Yeah. I feel good. I feel Damn. good. Damn. It really, it really is power fantasy. <laughs> yeah, wow. Holy crap. That future. Neat. Yeah. Uh, there's that one guy who has, like, the... Remember the goggles where his facial expressions are the LED lights on his goggles? Mm, yeah. Uh, this, the, game, the one thing I want to mention is that the... One of the characters has what I believe to be a communication disorder. Um, like, they're... I've I've ran into it like working with children and stuff where it's a uh, it's not fu- it's not like full blown autism yeah but it's more like they don't know how to handle like social cues or like everything they say to other people is like very monotone yeah and stuff like that so people people don't really know how to understand them yeah and one of the characters is that character like uh he's this he comes off as an awkward person but it's awkward to the point where it's like okay you have something like you have like a like a slight mental disability. And they portray him in, like, a really positive light. And they, the thing is, is, like, these people exist like that, but they never point out of, like, hey, you're different. Like, one of, one of your contacts is um, is a transvestite uh, male to female. Yeah. A transgender. Right? And she's, like, the mayor of a town. Hmm. But, and when you go to to collect information from this person, it's never of, like, 
whoa, I didn't know you transitioned or whoa, you're different or whatever. It's just like, hey, you're a person. What's up? Right? How, how did you know they were trans? Because the dude's just, it's a dude. Oh, like, okay. Like he had, uh, or she had surgery to like get breasts, but I see. It's the it's the build of like a six foot four, very burly black man. Okay. But he transitioned into a woman, so he's wearing a, he's wearing a dress, but he's still got like super thick thighs, and yeah. he has breasts and uh apparently a vagina. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, is like they never point that out. They're never like, oh man, you're different. Look at us being different. It's just like. Hey, you're a person well, I know. Well, this game sounds like it is the utopian future. So. It, it is the utopian future. You're parkour, badass, hacker, yeah. and everyone gets along. Yeah. <laughs> but that's Which begs the question, why is there this rebel faction oh, if it's amazing? Big data. Oh. Like, dude, the, Google, the, the fake Google CEO they have is, like, so Silicon Valley. Uh, he, he meets you first by... Uh, he's jogging along the beach line at yeah, night, and yeah. he runs into you at the party. Uh, after you go through a couple story missions, he's doing yoga Ooh, in wow. his uh, in his sky like his top uh, apartment. It was penthouse suite, it's a penthouse suite yeah. in downtown San Francisco. Yeah, and while he's doing yoga, he's talking on his Bluetooth headset. Oh. No, <laughs> he's got a beard and a man bun. Like, oh my god! Yeah, he's, he's the perfect man. He's the perfect man. Okay, yeah, yeah he's he's the perfect man. Like, <laughs> they play up Silicon Valley stereotypes to. They're almost extreme. Damn. It's fan fucking tastic. There's mm. a lot to love about this game. It's got a lot of character. It's got a lot of style. Mm. Yeah. I really cool. like it. Neat. This came out last year, right? Yeah, it came out last year. So it's 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 probably a contender for like late to the party award for mm. me. Okay. Uh but since I beat Yakuza Kiwami mm-hmm. and I've I mean, I've beaten enough side missions in that to where I'm like I'm done. Yeah. Uh yeah. It won't be your late to the party award winner. It probably won't. It'll probably be. It'll probably be this thing. It'll be linked to the past, my friend, <laughs> or the whole entire console, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be this thing as a unit. Yeah. Okay. Uh. But yeah, it's cool. I like, I like that game a lot. Me too. Yeah. I what, like. I played a bit of uh, Yarn Yoshi. Yeah. Uh, that game's fucking hard. Like it, it's this cutesy platformer. And it's very forgiving. Like you don't have lives. Like on the you, DS, right? On the DS. Okay. So I'm playing the Poochie yeah. version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you die, uh, it's not like you lose a life and it can be game over. It's just like you just go to the next dead point, the the last checkpoint, man. Like no worries. Like go back to where yeah. you last saved. Like no, like it's all chill, bro. Except you just can't beat this level. Except this level <laughs> is fucking hard. Every level has <laughs> infinity collectibles, and they're all hidden very well. Uh, it's. The game's hard. It's super surprisingly how hard. It's surprising how hard that game is. And that's how they they get you, man. Yeah, they give you that cute little exterior. And you're like, oh, this is no, no problem. Uh, little do you know. Listen, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it right now. Yeah. Yoshi's Woolly World yeah. is the Dark Souls. Oh, whoa. Of Mario platformers. Dude, I. Mm. <laughs> That'd be a twist for Nintendo. Yeah. Mm. It's rough. Oh, and then I, I didn't get to finish it last week, but uh. I, Finished it when I went home last week. It's uh the last volume of Nichi Joe came out in English. Right. Uh, Nichi Joe is a manga and an anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, it started a while ago, but it's a slapstick comedy. Yeah. Really absurdist humor. Like yeah. this is a thing of either you will love it to, to bits or yeah. you will hate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's really no in between for people who watch that show. Yeah. Uh, but it's finally done. Volume ten came out. It's over. Uh, I'm very sad. I. That is one of the few books where that I am reading where every single volume has made me laugh out loud while reading it, like to myself. Just I see something that's like so funny in there, and because that humor kind of hits me in the right way, I, I laugh out loud, and I'm like, "This, it's a good, it's a good shit." Mm. Uh, so I do recommend, I recommend that series as a read. It's completed now. You can go check it out however you want. Cool. Yeah. Uh, there is also an anime. The anime covers, I think, the first five volumes of the manga, and it's straight manga. There's no like bonus stuff. It doesn't really stray from any of the skits. Yeah. Uh, but the anime has some of the most beautiful animation I've seen in years. Like, I would compare it to like kind of greats, like Samurai Champloo in in terms of animation, mm-hmm. or or Cowboy Bebop. Like, they go to lengths to animate some really great scenes. Mm. So, it's a great cool. series recommend i recommend it it's a recommendation okay now i'm done nope not done went to a concert you did yeah i went to a punk band it's called mets okay 
I think I've heard you talk about them before. Yeah. So they're punk band out of Toronto. I went to go see them in Toronto. Uh, the only thing I want to talk about here is there's two things. There's one coming out of that concert. This was one of the only concerts I felt like I should have brought earplugs. Too loud? It was so fucking loud. Oh my Ooh. God. Because they're it was all punk bands that were playing. I guess, yeah. And it makes sense. Like, because they're just like loud, no- noisy, a bunch of distortion, yeah. feedback loops and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but I was driving home uh, after of... the concert. Yeah. I could not hear the traffic around me. Yeah. Like I had full blown, like, it was like I had tinnitus. I always feel like that every time I walk out of a club. Mm, it was worse. It was, this is the worst I've ever felt. Like I was, I might as well have been deaf. Mm, that's not fun. It's not, I should have brought a thing, yeah. but it was a baller concert. The second thing is I, I uh, discovered a band there. They, they were the first opener. They had two openers. Uh, they're called Plasma Labs. They're a they're a all girl punk group, also okay. from Toronto. I have never felt so fucking hipster in my life. Oh, because these girls do not have a record label yet. Okay, they don't have a record deal yet. Okay, so they're independent. I had to buy their album off of Bandcamp. Whoa, like all digital. Whoa, because they're just selling it themselves. Yeah. And so I had a conversation about uh, a coworker with the concert and they're like, Oh, what'd you do? I was like, Oh, I learned about this band. I bought them on thing. They're like, Oh, like, uh, like, or can I buy their CD? I'm like, I was like, nah, they're like the words out of my mouth were <laughs> nah, they're pretty underground. You probably haven't heard of them. <laughs> they don't even have a record deal yet. <laughs> and I felt like I said the words and I felt like such a douche. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you probably haven't heard of them. You probably haven't heard of them. They're really <laughs> underground. Like, what? like they don't have a record deal yet. I felt like such an asshole. Oh <laughs> boy. Like, yeah, like I said it, and I immediately I was like, I've become what I hate. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Go shoot yourself. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. It's uh. Yeah, I felt dirty. I felt dirty. I hope so. I was glad to support like local artists, uh-huh. but yeah, the thing is, is like I legitimately have to describe them that way. Yeah, because they sure. don't have a record. Sure, you you have to describe them. I that. don't have to. I don't have to say you probably never heard of them, yeah. but I I do have to say they are pretty underground because that's what they are. They're they are, they don't have a record deal yet because yeah. they don't. Yeah, they you, just have a band camp page. Or you could just say no. There's just this local group in Toronto. You can look them up. I. It's not enough information, man. No, it's... people don't need information. Don't let them know. No, you don't need to. That's on you. Uh, That's you projecting onto them. So dirty. That's you saying, there. No one knows about them, so I feel like I need to tell them about it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm a dirty hipster. Yeah, you like, are. Goddamn. We've always knew this. No, like, but but now it's there's like there's like evidence. I have evidence <laughs> in my brain. I have a memory of me being a dirty hipster. Oh, I'm glad. And I've come to that point. I'm glad. Uh, yeah. You're growing as a person. As a person? Yeah. Finally. You're finally accepting who you yeah, become. Yeah, who, who I is. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Now I'm done. All right, great. Now I'm great. done. Uh, let's see. I got a trio of sci-fi things I did. Okay. First one, I watched The Orville. I have no clue what that is. This is the new show. The hot chocolate Fox. thing? No, 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 no. Orville? This is, that, that's Ovaltine. Ovaltine? Oh. No, this or, is... Oh, the popcorn company? Orville? Orville, Orville Redenbacher. Oh, that's pretty good. Now, the Orville is a uh, sci-fi drama comedy. The one with Seth MacFarlane. Oh, is that the one where they're fake Star Wars or Star Trek? I, I mean, like, it, the setting actually does take place in the feature in space, but yeah, it's okay. like a parody knockoff. Uh, I... I don't like Seth MacFarlane. I don't like any of his, his stuff. Well, Except for this one. But this one takes the cake as being the worst thing he's ever made. Nice. Wow. I cannot believe how bad it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it needed more jokes or less jokes because all the jokes were just bad. Okay. Uh, like, in it's... It's almost like juvenile humor. Well, dude, that's all the stuff he does. And like... I feel like he gets... You can get away with it because in, like... Uh, family Guy and stuff like it's a cartoon and and you can always play up those dumber jokes because you can super yeah. exaggerate. I feel like the only Seth MacFarlane show that has somewhat intelligent humor, yeah. at least in the early seasons, yeah. was American Dad. Okay, because right. that played with like government and politics and stuff. Sure. Yeah, but this one it's like they're talking about like space policies and it's like, well, I don't trust him. He keeps starting. He 
he just keeps drawing penises on my notepad. And I'm like, wow, what the fuck's that supposed to mean? That's so funny. Uh, and I'm just like, what? and yeah, so it's not, it's not good. Don't watch it. It's awful. I kind of want to see it for how awful it is. It's really bad. Okay. Like, and it sucks too, because there's some production value here, but it's awful. Well, yeah, it's the guy behind Family Guy. They're going to put money behind it. Yeah, okay. So that was the worst of sci-fi. The one in the middle I watched, the neutral thing I watched, was I watched the original Blade Runner. Okay. Oh, I forgot to watch that. Damn. That movie stars Harrison Ford, 1982. It's a it's a hard-boiled detective sci-fi Is it story. sci-fi noir? Kind of. Okay. And I love, like, all the creativity and the craftsmanship and the the idea the vision the score for this movie is amazing okay the story and acting and characters are awful mm. i understand why it's a classic it, it definitely like pushed the envelope and it definitely paved the way and i can totally see why there's a lot of different like anime i like mm-hmm. takes tons of inspiration from this okay. or like you can tell that like there were ideas formed here that people saw when they were kids and they implemented them into what's okay. popularized today and i totally respect it for that i understand why it's a classic but i do not think it's that great of a movie like it's just the the plot itself just is kind of it's it's just really simple mm. and the way harrison ford is able to just <laughs> i don't want to say he bumbles along and and figures it out but he just magically appears where he needs to be oh okay right and it's like for a hard boiled detective it's like I, I wish there was just a bit more to it to i also kind of felt whatever. that way about uh, la noir yeah it's kind of, yeah where la I noir was just that. like oh look your main character is just yeah. happened to f- find the guy burying yeah. the body like yeah yeah uh so yeah blade runner super cool mm-hmm. just not as great if you only watched first for today yeah. uh an addendum to that is or an addition to that is i also watched the brand new anime blade runner 2022 Oh, it's like a prequel to the new movie or something? Uh, it takes place in between Blade Runner and 2049. Okay. Holy shit, that's amazing. All right. It's um by the director who did Cowboy Bebop. Does it, does it have anime Ryan Gosling? Uh, no, it doesn't. But uh, just it's not long. Just watch it. It's mm. it's insane. Uh, but the thing that I liked the most that I watched this past week was I watched the two episode premiere of Star Trek Discovery. Uh, oh yeah, the, the new, new Star Trek show. show. It's a prequel, I believe, to the original Star Trek, mm-hmm. and it is, well, the pilots, I guess, are different. You don't really have an idea of what the main show is going to be like, but from I can see from what they've shown, <laughs> it's it seems promising. It's definitely darker than most Star Trek shows, and in, in in thematically what they're trying to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Production value is amazing. Mm-hmm. It almost looks like the J.J. Abrams films in terms of their production value. Like, when they're on the bridge and you just see fucking lens flares everywhere. Uh, the thing it does that I've never known I wanted is Michelle Yeoh as the commander. Who's Michelle Yeoh? Uh, famous Chinese actress. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She was the older lady. I, I didn't like that movie. I don't remember. Okay. Right. Well, Michelle Yeoh is Michelle Yeoh. Okay. When you see her, you'll be like, oh, I've seen oh, her. Oh, you've seen her in places. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. No, it's a... Uh, it, it's got... Uh, so far, I think it, it's got an interesting premise. It's the idea of... The Klingons have been gone for forever, and now we've made first contact with them again, and they're on full scale war, and Starfleet's on back foot. Okay, that's generally the setup. Um, but it's super cool. Again, like it's a, tons of uh, production value. The main character is a girl. Mm-hmm. She's uh, she's also a black female girl, who's human but raised on Vulcan, so she's got that whole logic thing. Okay. Uh, Wait. I... Okay. Never mind. What? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. some that's some controversial shit I was gonna say. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, the nah, fuck it. I just, so they they put a a white male in a black female's body, is basically what happened. Kinda, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> the what? A... Her acting is the part is the part of the show that I feel most disappointed by. This her acting is like a girl who's trying to prove that she knows sci fi. Okay. Like a girl that's like I'm so into sci fi like me because i'm into sci-fi like that's where acting comes off like she's trying a little too hard and so it doesn't come off as being as natural i think it's just a role she has to grow into does it feel like 
like a like at an anime convention when someone who is new to anime is like i know anime yes look at my shirt that's exactly like, what it's okay. like and she's like i'm wearing the suit i got the captain's badge yeah um i can be emotionless like a vulcan it's like yeah. okay we, we get it. it you got the part just cool down <laughs> relax relax no just, one's judging you yeah man. uh so i i feel like she just needs to tone down a little bit and just you know settle in uh, but yeah no i really enjoyed it i i want to stick with it I don't know what the reviews are like out there, but I think it's pretty solid. Not the best thing in the world, but uh, it's a promising start to to Star Trek again. Yeah. So I have some other friends that are Star Trek fans, yeah, and they have watched this yeah. this one, and they don't yeah. like it, yeah, at all. Yeah, I can see um, why. Mainly because, <clears throat> like, so my my other friends are mostly TNG fans. Uh, yeah, but yeah, okay, everyone right. our ages. Yeah, and uh, the thing about TNG that, and even from the episodes I've watched, is they take their space politics very seriously. Yeah, the whole thing of I can, oh, uh, like we can't mess with other planets. Um, we're not gonna here to start wars. Yeah, we're gonna do all this stuff. And it, it sounds like in this new series, they kind of throw all that shit out the window, yeah. and they're just like, oh, like we can't fuck with other planets except when I feel like it. Yeah, and, or it's like we can't start wars except when the show needs explosions. Yeah. Right, and for them, apparently, it feels kind of cheap. Like they're taking a lot of modern day, uh, like action movie tropes and yeah. putting it into Star Trek. When Star Trek for them was this, uh, <clears throat> at times, this deep introspective yeah. show about humanity, about hard, harder questions like yeah. robot life and what is, yeah. what does it mean to be alive and stuff yeah. like that. I I totally understand that's that side of the argument, and I and I feel like this is the pilot, and pilots are usually never very uh, never a good representation of what an actual series is like okay or right? can be yeah and i i can't think of a single pilot that actually does that well firefly that's actually one of the worst examples. <laughs> firefly has the worst pilot i've ever seen in terms of representing what the show is, is. like okay. um but for star trek i i don't know like yes it definitely, it definitely feels like it's a show that was made today in 2017 mm-hmm. but that whole idea of Star Trek being about, you know, preserving humanity and being more explorers versus warriors. Yeah. I get that. But because this is a prequel, it's just it's just thematically it makes sense to me. It's like this is before the Star Trek we knew has been established. Okay. This is the foundations and building blocks up to why Star Trek is like that. And this prequel is them learning their mistakes. Is the story more of like humanity trying to be accepted by other space races like because they're relatively new like or they're trying to like put a foothold and like make other people take them seriously by using their old hu- human ways by like no how do we make people take us seriously no start a war the the idea like the the actual uh plot i would say right now is just defend ourselves from the klingons oh okay like it's as simple as that like the klingons have united they're and, coming and they're coming the krogan have come and, you know i think i like it a lot because it's super mass effect okay it's 100 percent. they're gonna have to sterilize the krogans yeah pretty much. <laughs> i mean it, i mean the <laughs> yeah and like and i think that's why i'm really into it but I, at the same time i know mass effect is not star trek at all mm-hmm. and so if you are super huge trekkie i can totally see the um the disappointment we'll say mm-hmm. but i it's one of those shows where like if you took star trek out of the title is this still a good show and i would say yes mm-hmm so but yeah that's uh that's what i watched how do they um how do they portray force powers (laughs) i was like uh you know (laughs) they don't they don't she has this cool suit that just fucking rockets her oh really she puts on a spacesuit and she's like it's two thousand kilometers away she's like and then she's like computer and she's like engines engaged and the suit fucking iron mans are across space that's pretty cool yeah so that's really neat uh they do this cool thing where uh, yeah how's future tech in that show oh it's so cool uh what do you call it they have this one thing where actually this is not, this is something you've seen in star trek you know when they're like energized the what's that thing called that transportation yeah teleporter so they transport a bomb onto a person's body like because there's there's dead warriors on the field yeah and the enemies the klingons are trying to like get their bodies back so that they can uh bury them yeah and and the humans are like fuck this we got to blow up that ship so they energize a a missile onto a dead body that's being carried into the ship by a tractor beam oh wow and then they blow up the ship from the inside that's, that's some dark tactics yeah and i'm just like what am i watching this does, is... yeah again that doesn't sound like star trek <laughs> no it doesn't but you're like whoa this They're just is like disres- disrespecting <laughs> yeah. dead bodies and yeah. like other cultures yeah 
It's fucked. It's... But the the main character, she's uh, she comes off as being super fucked. So I don't. Well, know. isn't that the whole like um, Vulcan thing of like the thing with the Vulcans is that there's straight logic. Yeah. And it like there's there is no emotion in what they do. Exactly. That's and that's her problem. Yeah. Right. So like that that seems to be the. They're just like math checks out. Made a bar graph. Check out my Excel sheet. Blow up all the Klingon dead bodies. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Her turn seems a little like a little too fast, but whatever. Okay, I liked it. Cool. I was into it. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think it's it for the week. I forget. Did you end up beating Persona Five? I did. Okay. We should have spoiled that scene, right? Yeah. We should. Okay. We should. I want to talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's it for cool. my week. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we forgot. Uh, I did have the episodes of Kamen Rider build, but I guess we could just save that for next week. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll stick up to five and see what happens. I think we should. We both should stick up to five and like, and then see what happens. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, so we'll we'll wrap up with another two powder next week on that and see what happens. Um, I think that's that's it for us. Yep. Yeah. You can find us on YouTube. I guess we're there, yeah. TNIB. You can find us on iTunes. I, I guess we're there, too. TNIB. Sure. Or no, that's Three Nerds in the Basement. Okay. You can find us on Facebook. I guess. You can find us on Twitter. Uh-huh. You don't really have to follow the Twitter, because it's just regurgitation of the Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right, then. Till next week. Till next week. Oh, if you have any questions, Paul, <laughs> if you have any questions, send them in. Yeah, or anyone else. Anyone else. It doesn't have to be just Paul. I mean, like, Paul, great job. But we're, thank, we're thank just, it's, an open, it's an open invitation. Yeah, open mic night. Open yeah. mic night every night. Yeah. Awesome. Bye. <laughs>